This is Scott Cox, Scotty's Gun Works. Gonna be making a video today uh, of a rifle. Gonna uh, show from start to finish. Gonna blew it, redo the stock and the stock on it. It's got a one piece stock. Uh, I'm gonna take you in there in the shop and we'll show you what we're gonna be doing to it. All right, here we are. Uh, here's the rifle I was talking about. Uh, definitely needs to be re-blued. Try to give you a really good look at it. This is going to be one of those before and after videos. You can see that it's got some pits in it. Uh, barrels in kind of rough shape. Definitely needs to be reworked and re-blued. Um, stocks, not in real bad shape. Got a few little gouges in it. Um, anyway, when it's all said and done, this gun's going to look like a brand new one again. This is a Marlin. Semi-automatic rifle, clip fed, gonna blow the clip, uh, just gonna totally rework it, make it look just like it did when it came out of the box. This gun's probably about 60 years old, I'd say. It's, it's an old one. But anyway, uh, I'm just gonna show different stages of this, and uh, I'm gonna show you my polishing procedure on it. And, uh, you know, going to show you what it's going to look like. Uh, I'm going to show myself, you know, sanding the wood, uh, filling in the grain. Um, just making this look like a new rifle. Oh, heck, right now would be a good idea to make one from start to finish. And we'll use this rifle here as a, as a good uh, candidate to make this video. Okay, here we are a little bit into it. Kind of wanted to show y'all how greasy and dirty this gun is. Got a lot of, got a lot of, uh, old grease. It's done, pretty much done turned to varnish, I guess. It was really affecting the action of the bolt. But you get a really good look at this. I want this to be one of them videos from start to finish where I can give you as much detail on everything as I can. Um, gun is in really dirty shape the parts and all seem to be in really good shape as far as you know anywhere but uh just got a lot of uh you can see the years where the gun had not been cleaned i done got the uh internals out of it and by the way this is a marlin model a1 if you're not familiar with that it's just a, a really old marlin you know uh it dates back quite a while it's a really good rifle it's just a really old one but uh, got all the parts here out of it. I'm going to clean all them up, see how dirty they are. And, of course, I'm going to show you some after effects as I go. Uh, and this bolt here is going to, French bolt's going to look like a brand new one when it's all said and done. Um, what I do when I uh, blow a gun, I take it completely down, give it a good thorough cleaning, and, you know, polish anything that needs to be polished. It might have tool marks in it. Um, clean all the inside of the receiver out real good. Uh, I don't see any sense in taking the receiver from the barrel, but I might. Uh, we'll just kind of play it all by ear and see. Uh, the first thing I like to do after I take a gun apart, took all the parts out of it. And I uh, hadn't cleaned it in there yet, but I'm going to here directly. But the first thing I like to do before I do anything is recrown the barrel. I don't know if you can tell anything about that or not, but anyway, the the barrel is recrowned. That's the first thing I like to do uh, because you have to put it in a lathe, and you know, if you get that side all polished up, you don't want to <clears throat> mar it up with the uh, the chuck, you know, that's in the lathe. But there's our crown. Crown's finished. Looks really good. Uh, done started polishing on it. I don't know if you can tell very much about that or not in this particular light. But what I'm doing right now is um. It's taking a little bit of time, but I'm fine going over this with a fine tooth comb, so to speak, because I want to make sure we get all the pits out of it and make sure everything's blended in. We ain't got no dips in it or, you know, anything like that. I like to make sure that all the pits are gone, even the places you're not going to be able to see. Like, for instance, where the stock, you know, the places the stock will hide. Um, you know, a lot of people probably cut corners. Uh, now I may want to make sure that that gun, when that, if that customer ever takes this gun out of the stock and he looks up under the bottom of it, it's going to look just as good under there as it does on top, <clears throat> you know, 
because uh, that's the way it would have looked at the factory. And this particular gun right here, I'd said I'd pull the barrel off the receiver and get in there because it's a whole lot easier to get that good and clean because this thing's got a pinned in ejector, which is basically just a like a pin stuck out in there and the bowl will ride on it and when it comes back so far it'll hit that pin, the empty shell wheel and with the help of the extractor claw it'll, it'll fling it out. Um, but it's just a whole lot easier, you know, to get in there and clean it at this end than it was the other end. And the barrel wasn't that hard to get off. It's, it's just a pressed in barrel held in with a pin. You know, like so. I'll put me an index mark on to where I can make sure that I put it back exactly how we took it off. But uh, that's just one of the situations, you know, you get into. Uh, <clears throat> you know, instead of working around it, I like to, you know, make sure that uh, cover all the bases. Right down to a really good thorough clean. So I'll probably uh, use some other cleaning brushes and stuff like that to get that right in there real good. You know, that way it'll blow up real nice. And, you know, when you pull the bolt open, you'll be able to look up in there and see all that's uh, nice and smooth. And it ain't all, you know, still got lead and stuff stuck all up in there. A lot of times you can't get any pits out that might have formed in there. But you can clean it up real nice. In this particular case here, I don't believe we got any pits in it anyway. So it should clean up rather nice. Okay, I got it chunked up on the on the vise here that I built. I know y'all probably seen that in other videos. But uh, anyway, what I do is I chunk it up on the vise. Then I will take and, uh, you know, use sanding blocks and just do some hand sanding with regular sandpaper. Then I'll use an uh, electric sander. You know, and I'll do the whole stock like that. Then I'll detail it, you know, with a sanding block or just, you know, just use a regular piece of paper, you know, just depending on the situation, like back in here and, uh, <clears throat> you know, places like that. Get that right there real good with a sanding block. Kind of get everything back flat again like it's supposed to be. And, you know, across the top of the channel here. I did want to point this out. Uh, if you're going to attempt to do this at the, at your house, you know, and uh, refinish your own stock, uh, I always like to leave the butt plate on there. And that way when I'm hitting it with a sanding block, all that uh, sands in together with the wood. Uh, that's just a little tip that'll, you know, kind of help you out. So just remember to leave the butt plate on there and then sand it all in together. And then you can, uh, you know, after you get your stock uh, ready to put the finish on it, you can take the butt plate off and then just polish it. And that way it's got a really nice custom fit, nice polish on it, and it really blends in together really good. Okay, there we are. We got it all sanded down nice and smooth, all the little bad places out of it. Um, I don't know if you can tell much about it or not, but it's pretty slick. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the butt plate off, and then I'm going to put all the hanging gear on it. So when I go in there and hang it in the stock room, I was attempting to take this in there and I put the stain on it. Uh, but I noticed that the hole here was stripped out. Um, what had happened was the screw here. Well, of course, I'm going to polish that down, you know, and blew that. But anyway, it's um, stripped out. So I thought, well, I'll take this opportunity and show you how I'd fix that. Uh, I'm going to try to do this as I film this so you can get an idea. But what I did is I uh, got a dowel, a dowel rod. It's just slightly bigger than that hole right there. And this is common sense. I'm going to take and drill the hole out. Making sure that I'm good and straight, you know, with the stock. You know, parallel with the top of it. Just use common sense with it. It's good and snug the way it's supposed to be. Then what I'll do is I'll just reach over and get the air line and pull it out. Put a little glue in it. It's 
said it ain't no big issue because I like for the dowel rod to fit kind of tight. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, cut this dowel rod a little bit. You basically just put it like so. Take your little hammer. Tap it up in there, and that's basically all you do to it. And then what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cut it off, and then I'm just gonna flatten it out. And then I'm gonna put the bottom screw in along with the butt plate and redrill the hole. And that way, you know, when the stock's all finished, it'll be done right. Okay, here we are. Done to uh, plug that and see how nice and smooth it is and flat. Of course, it's glued in and everything. And then what I did is I uh, put the uh, butt plate on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and center that up, making sure it's, you know, nice and centered like it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to take this pencil, you know, and draw a little circle in there. Then after I do that, I'm going to take... This right here, which is a little punch, because I'll move that out of the way, and I'll just put an indemption right dead center of that. Then I'll you know, drill the proper sized hole, and then that'll be a, be fixed. Don't have to worry about it coming out. Okay, there we go. Then got it drilled. And just taking. it's gonna be the proper size it's perfect ah, yeah and there we go that's how you fix a stripped out hole on a stock there it is with a base stain on it and so what I do is I put a base stain on it and then after I get uh, the grains all filled and a nice smooth texture to it I'll spray it with a uh, another stain, which will be a little bit darker, uh, a lot more shinier. In this particular one here, we're going to put a standard finish on it. The standard finish will look like this Marlin 336 here. Not real shiny, but not dull. Um, this is a finished one. All the grains are filled in, real smooth feel to it. Stock in forearm. Now, this is a black walnut stock, and that's a birch stock. Still got several more coats I want to put on it. Then I'm going to spray it with a stain, you know, which is going to darken the wood up. Uh, just kind of wanted to give everybody a little bit of an update on it. Uh, fixing to go in here in a little bit and put the rifle back together. But uh, there we are so far. That's true oil I put on that. Just filling in all the grains, which this is a birch wood. There ain't a lot of open grain in that. Uh, just took it out of the blue end basket, just fixing to reassemble it. Kind of wanted everybody to look at it, you know. Kind of want to take you through this step by step. Uh, gun turned out really nice. Uh, I don't know if this camera will do it justice or not, but uh, anyway, there it is. Turned out real good. Magazine and all turned out really nice on it. Uh, still got a little oil on it. Um, all the little accessories and all that go with it, all the little pieces. <clears throat> um, you know, turned out real good with it. Little screws and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to reassemble it. Got the stock in there in the uh, stock room. Um, since we get all that together, we'll merge all this stuff together and have practically a brand new rifle. All right, let me make another quick point here, folks. While I've got this, uh, while I've got this gun all apart here, what I like to do when I go to uh, put one back together, of course, some some parts you know you're not going to blue. I uh, always go over and I clean every part really good, and I check every part. Uh, like for instance, this bolt right here. This is something you didn't blue, but I took and I, I clean it back up. You know, just like the factory would have had. Put the brush finish back on it. Had a few little no nicks and stuff on it so anyway i cleaned the face of it really good uh cleaned the inside out really good of course got a few more parts over here 
uh, you know, that I'm going to go over and hand clean real good. What I'm saying is whenever I blew a gun, I want to make sure, and I may have done mention this, but uh, everything is thoroughly hand cleaned. Um, and inspected, and then I put everything back together and, you know, time everything back like it's supposed to be. That's just one of the services you get, you know, when you uh, let us blow the gun for you. And let me just say we really appreciate it, appreciate the privilege of doing it. Um, just want to get you back a gun that looks like it did when it was brand new. You know, um, this old rifle right here is probably close to 100 years old, I'd imagine. It's pretty old. I'm going to do some research on it and give... Uh, a good description of this particular rifle here at the end of this video here. Got the trigger mechanism all in it and everything. Looking really good. Fixing to reassemble the bolt. Been here since about 9 o'clock this morning. It's about 9 o'clock uh, at night. Been here a good 12 hours. Not complaining. Glad to do it. The uh, Marlin A1. It's got the detachable box magazine. Um, there it is. I'm going to try to give you a really good look at it. That's got the standard blue on it. There it is all fully assembled. Uh, got it all assembled and test fired it a while ago. Shot it about two times. It shot really good. Shells out with no problem. Um, that's got a uh, birch stock on it. As you all remember me sanding it all down. I put the uh, walnut finish on it. And then I put a true oil finish over that. Turned it really good. Uh, this particular rifle right here was made around 1935 to around 1946 uh, on the information that I obtained. Anyway, there it is. Turned out really nice. I believe my customer really be pleased with it. Uh, if you all have any uh, shotguns, rifles, pistols, or anything like that that needs to be refurbished, uh, feel free to give me a call. And as usual, I really do appreciate everybody watching these videos.